This liquid dispenser was made from this. How do that? In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this imagination into reality. By the way, imagination in this sense can be pretty much anything like a 2D drawing sketch of a character, a diorama, product design, or a girlfriend. Uh, may maybe not that last one. You, you can't really make that. In second thoughts, maybe you can. Anyways, before I begin how I started to make this, I'd like to introduce some background story of why I ended up making this. So back in December 2023, I made a little sculpture for one of my favorite artists, traveled across Korea, and delivered it myself. Later on, we got to meet up and talk about random creative products, and since the artist just loves shoving alcohol into the mouth, maybe an alcohol-related product would be nice. Perhaps a device where it looks like the artist's character is pouring a drink for you. And that's where this product came along. It's a machine in Korea for people like me, people who have no friend, or too depressed to pour themselves a drink. So obviously, since we already have a device with the function we wanted, our first step is to disassemble the actual product. When disassembling the product, it's very important to handle with caution to avoid permanent damage. After the product is disassembled, we need to understand what each part does in order to manipulate them in the way we want them to work. This is the main board, it's the brain of the mechanism. Important. This is the sensor, it senses stuff in front of it like hands, cups, or the- Important. This is the electric pump, it, it pumps water. Important. And this is the battery, and it provides energy to the rest of the electric components. Basically, it's like the cafeteria lady in school. Without the cafeteria lady, so students, teachers, facility members will starve and the school doesn't function. So yeah, important. important. Now it's all about designing the shell that will protect all these components in a virtual environment. So my preferred way to do this is to measure out all the components with my trusty ruler and make virtual components in the virtual environment so that I can virtually manipulate them and virtually achieve my goal ending up with virtual happiness and then I come back to the real world and get depressed. This was the first prototype. As you can see the walls are pretty thick so I can't really access the button which should have been accessed through pressing one of the walls but since the walls are too thick the wall cannot deform and it can't it doesn't let me touch the button. So we had to make some change, so what can we do to make the walls more flexible or less uh, rigid? Okay, so this is our first prototype. The first prototype, as you can see, is very thick and it's also is made out of PLA, so it's very hard. Yeah, it's very hard. Meanwhile, this is the second prototype and as you can see, it's very thin, well, not very, but relatively thinner than the first prototype and also this one is made out of PETG. Basically a different material and one of its feature is that it's much more flexible than PLA. This part as you can see this part is darker because it's a see-through. If you press this part you can see that it deforms very easily. I made this part thin so that our uh, spring conductive button can fit right here like this, I can access the button through this thin wall. However, there is something that I have to change. The, the wall that I've put inside is too thin. It has to come out more so that it can, you know, sustain that certain distance, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's check if the other features are working as well. This hole is for the sensor, which is this one right here. Uh, yeah, this one has to be a bit thicker as well. If I keep this module up to the wall due to this part, it doesn't go flat to the wall. It has a little space, it has a little dent inside, and I don't want that, so yeah. This has to be like a few millimeters longer, and this one has to be a few centimeters longer. Other than that, I think I think it's we're good to go. I think good to go. We just have to thicken these two parts, and we're good to go. Nice, bread. 
After upgrading our shell, I tested out the motor function, like how strong the motor is, how much height can the power overcome, blah blah blah. And then I created the case for the silicone, which is used to attach the whole shell into the bottle and pump liquid out. This prototype 3.5, as you can see, it's not complete, however, it can get you know, stuck onto the stuck, or it can be attached to the bottle. The uh, power button is working fine. Right there, I'm gonna turn it off for now. This is the sensor. Hi. If an object comes over the sensor, the motor is activated, therefore pumps out the Pepsi Zero out from the bottle and up through here. Uh, by the way, any parts that are in contact with the actual liquid is all food safe. Food safe because they are all from the product which is actually already food safe. 3D printed materials are not food safe therefore I do not recommend people to actually you know let any food get in contact with the 3D prints. This one looks like it's made out of 3D prints however the 3D printed materials are just the shell so yes this is uh, food safe. I have my comically large cup one of my favorite cups it's turned on and we'll just set it to a cup of liquid and if i uh, there we go from the top it kind of looks like this then so for some odd reason it's it's all film but maybe because this is a carb carbonated drink and sucking the liquid from it causes it to bubble I guess. Right. Mm. Well, that's appetizing. Maybe this is for non-carbonated drinks. Anyways, yeah, it works. Great. Okay, so now let's turn it off. Since we are done with testing, we have to clean this up. Now the problem is, there's a silicon be uh, underneath this whole shell that holds this whole bottle like that. But I don't have I don't have any protective layer under it it like to hold the whole silicon so i'm not sure if yeah so this is what happens so if i take off the shell this is what happens the silicon is stays on the bottle and we have to do something about that so i have created the undercover for the silicon bottle holder and created drill holes so that i can attach it under the silicon shell with screws and next, let's print the upgraded model with our expensive Bamboo Lab printer. And while that's printing, we're gonna make the character. Since the character doesn't have a humanoid shape, it's easier to just sculpt it out from a blob. When sculpting, we always want to start from the rough shape to the details. So after sculpting the rough body shape, let's pull out the ears, let's add two more spears for the feet, and since I have ADHD, let's quickly make the bottle which the character will hold and place it onto the character. We add two more spears and make them into hands and lastly the tail. When the rough shape is all done we remesh it into a smaller sized mesh and smooth them all out. After the character is finished we can place a curve in the bottle and the character which resembles the hole that the tube will go through. We will drill the hole using the boolean modifier. Let's check if the hole is drilled well and orient the best angle for the models to print. For the bottle, I decided to use transparent resin for the first time, so I had to change the resin and add blue resin coloring because uh, I only had blue dye. And I also learned that transparent resin takes a little longer to cure. After curing the product, one more time, I sanded the surface a little and it became non-transparent. As you can see, it's not clear. It's very opaque or opaque. So, according to the great god of Google, a lot of people said that in order to make this transparent again, all I have to do is spray some of UV gloves, which I do have. So let me try that out. As soon as I spray the gloss on it, it turned clear, so yay. Thanks, Google. Since the bottle is crystal clear now, let's check on our character print and other prints. All prints were sanded and were applied layer of primer to reduce the print texture. 
So let's assemble all the parts together and see the overall find if there are any flaws in it. And let's start with painting the shell. I'm not really used to using brushes, but you know, I'll try my best. In the front, I put a little drawing of the character pouring one, giving the idea what this actually does and, you know, express cuteness. And next, we paint the figure with sprays and brush. And if you paint the face, paint the logo for the bottle. The final product is finally finished. Despite the fact that this project was spontaneous, it is one of my favorite projects I have done so far. Because I had to deal with electronics that I've never dealt with before and that to me was like an adventure. And generally I just like messing up with electronics. However the real reason why I had so much fun with this project is because I had so many failures with it. These here are my previous prototypes, and every prototype had characteristics that needed revision. So every time I made one prototype, I had to fix it, again and again and again. Which was in some way a pain, but every time I had resolved a problem, it felt like I'm taking a step towards my goal. And that was the most meaningful part of this whole project. I started up with the roughest idea, which didn't even function the way it should have. And from there on, I started to fix the model one by one. Finally, resulting with a satisfying model. And honestly speaking, I believe that is the answer to the question from the title, which is how to make imagination become reality. If there's a goal that you want to achieve or make it into reality, you'll go through failures. And so, you'll have to seek the reason of failure, like did I do something wrong there, was there a better way to do it? And after that, you find a way to solve the problem based on your knowledge or searching how other people did it. And then carry out the action, and next step, make another failure until you meet your satisfaction. So yeah, if there's something that you're trying to do right now, something that you want to make it into reality and if you fail the long while doing it I just want to let you know that you're probably doing a great job so don't give up find mistakes make changes and fail again because you can make your imagination become reality it just takes time and trials just like I did anyways this was Korean Butter and uh, I will come back with a new video. Probably something more attractive, more funny, blah blah blah. More MZ, you know. Yeah, what a cheesy ending. Anyways, bye.